In a previous video, we toured the herbarium at the Liberty Hyde Bailey Hortorium at Cornell University. Now, a few years back when I had first visited, I leafed through countless pages of old plant catalogs from the late 1800s through the 1900s, comparing and contrasting mainly the houseplant offerings over the last two centuries. Though this isn't a comprehensive overview of earlier offerings, it will give you a sense of the plants that nurseries were providing to the public, not to mention some of the great artwork that accompanied such catalogs, books, and pamphlets. This episode is brought to you by Green Chef a CCOF certified organic company with dishes for every lifestyle, including keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. All right, we're gonna have a Cajun spice chickpea power bowl. I mean, we did this last week, not this particular dish, but man, they had some real winning recipes. I think what I've determined between like the organic ingredients, and then also just the spices and sauces really kind of take it over the edge. And we have been renovating currently and having these recipes that are waiting for us to make a really quick and easy meal. Because oftentimes they take anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. Sometimes I could actually even get done with them sooner. So uh, we're gonna make that today. Green Chef has doorstep delivery with pre-portioned ingredients and pre-made sauces, easy to follow chef crafted recipes featuring organic, sustainably sourced ingredients, and 24 weekly options to choose from, so you'll never get gastronomically bored. Just use my code SUMMERRAIN135 to get $135 off across five boxes, plus free shipping on your first box. Just go to greenchef.com for more details. So one of the things that I recalled here the last time was just going through some of the old catalogs, and I know that we weren't able to get all the old catalogs out, but it was such a crazy thing to see, like what are the plants available now? And I, and I think a lot of folks will know what the plants are available now because a lot of folks are collecting plants. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the frenzy, I think, that might have happened back in the Victorian era when like plants started to really captivate people. And so um, you went ahead and actually pulled out some books and magazines that we could look at and just to kind of compare and contrast like what was available, you know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, it was a little hard to find um, house plant offerings mm -hmm. in our catalogs. Yeah. Um, I did try to look using that um, Victorian era kind of yeah. frame work. I looked at ferns, looked for some fern things and some, uh, some of the more unusual plants that you might have seen in a, in a Victorian era mm -hmm. uh, conservatory, um, but it was difficult to find seed catalogs that actually offered uh, house plants. This, right. is, this, however, is something that's um, caught my eye. This is Vix Illustrated Monthly from November 1891. Wow. Rochester, New York. And Rochester used to be a place that had a lot of nurseries yes. actually at some point. I think they might still have some, but <laughs> not as much as back in the day. And so here in 1891, here's a nice uh, drawing of oh, winter wow. window gardens. So I don't know that we could I probably mean, identify some of those plants. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, honestly, I mean, look, look at these. Like, it's so amazing to see this because some people would be like, that looks like my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and obviously, like, ferns were, like, a big thing, right? Everybody has mm -hmm. a, a fern, you know, ferns in the windows and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, they're quite small in illustrations, but I'm sure like people will get the gist of it. Right, so not yeah. exactly you know, a, an offer to buy them, but um, a, uh, a, a little bit of a guide to how to use them once you yeah. have them. These are also from um, gardening magazines. Um, 1887, there's the West Indian fan fern mm. um, and how to um, grow it. And I'm assuming that some of these things were actually probably grown indoors, yes. largely because mm -hmm. it's if a West Indian fan firm, you're probably not growing that unless maybe you're in Florida. <laughs> right, here's Polysticum unitum undulatum in the Gardener's Chronicle 1914. So again, wow. you know, a, an illustration of something that you would probably grow yeah. in your home. 
this is um, the Gardener's Chronicle. I'm not, I don't know exactly how old this is. Um, I mean, the, the run of it. This, this is 1881. One is old. This one is 1881, but um, this is, goes way back. Oh, I see. Um, but here are, are um, illustrations of greenhouses. Ah, and even and like the ones that you could build on the side of your house or yes. something. Yeah. So sort of, sort of elicit some, some uh, home interest in, in gardening. Uh, peas. There was. I thought there was another. More peas and potatoes, yeah. but again. Unbelievable, these little catalogs, right? It's so crazy. Yeah, there's nice ferns. There's yeah. some ferns. Yeah. And this looks like a witch hazel. Yeah, it is yeah. a witch hazel. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so this is Logies, um, a company you yeah. might have heard of. Logies in Connecticut. Yeah, right, we've right. actually done a tour with them, and oh, they've okay. been around for quite some time. Yeah, so here, yeah. Are their, here are their catalogs from the 40s and 50s. Yeah. And as you can see, they're just, they're kind of boring. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> They're just because like just like a just laundry list of that's yeah, right that's of right plants. with a few with a few photographs but because these are from the 40s and 50s the yeah. photographs are black and white. <laughs> um, it would not be satisfactory for anybody these days. No, not at all. <laughs> Here in 1982, we've moved into some nice ah, color illustrations, yep. but um, not not fully yet. You know, not there's fully. Some, there's that's some right. gray, but look, these are these are ones that. Um, that we would see you sure. know, today, obviously, yep. and I'm sure Logies have gone through some crazy iterations because even they said, you know, some of the plants that were, you know, in style years ago have come back in style. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. had one mother plant and they have to like repropagate it now. Unbelievable. There's one from 19, what's this one, 87? 1997. 97. So yeah. that one's almost all entirely in color. Yeah. Again, the same company just kind of shows the uh, evolution of that. Yeah. Unbelievable. The catalog. And then this is this is 2019. Yeah. So. Kind of so cool because you could actually just see through history. You know, there's living history there because they're still around and operational. Mm -hmm. But just to compare, you know, even just like over the years, you know, what was, what was in 1997? Do they still have this two-faced begonia? I mean, that mm -hmm. one's mm -hmm. pretty exquisite right there. Look at that. It has white with like this kind of deep red edging. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that in their catalog, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> and that's one of the um, the values of the catalog collection yeah. and the work that Ethel, Liberty High Bailey's daughter Ethel Zoe did for I think 70 years wow. was keep track of what was available in a catalog yeah. um, and, and write it down on a little card <laughs> so that we could look use those cards today yeah. to uh, research that. And these are some more of the These are illustrations, begonias, begonias American Garden, 8, mm -hmm. 1891. Look at this one. It's kind of like color block almost, yeah, color that's blocky. 1905. Mm -hmm. Another begonia company, the Rose Croft mm -hmm. Begonia Gardens, not one that I'm familiar with, yeah. but again, somewhat of a... But I think you're also seeing, like, here's how to display. You know, they have mm -hmm. photonia, they have some begonias in here. And, like, look, at we're displaying them in our house on our plant stand. So these are also meant to be indoors and yes. to be enjoyed. And maybe their color with the pinks, you know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. anybody nowadays could actually appreciate that because I've gone and done houseplant home tours and people are like, I like to have my pink plants in this corner oh, really? and my dark <laughs> plants in this corner. You know? <laughs> so some of that is just, like, very... Very, um, very similar to uh, connect with. Mm -hmm. These are so cool. This one's beautiful. Look at that color. This is like the color of the house that we're painting. And we're doing oh. brass. Mm -hmm. So it looks very similar to that, very actually. Nice. Yeah, I love that color now that I see it. 18 so that's from 1899, 1890, their 60th anniversary in 18. 98. Wow. So they say. I think this is one yeah. of them. Apparently, some of them. I just printed these um, little biographies out. Yeah. Um, some of them say um, it's not really certain when the company was begun because they're so old. The companies are so old. But this is interesting. He, um, he was a pioneer in introducing color printing to the trade in these catalogs starting in 1865. And it started with flowers, really. <laughs> bulbs. bulbs. Bulbs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here are the bulbs, the bulb catalogs. Some of the bulb catalogs. This one, as I said, the 60th anniversary catalog, which um, provides a whole history of the company. And there's the founder, um, Henry Dreer. 
And he was bringing in bulbs from the Netherlands, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. was he Dutch at all? I mean, Dreer no, doesn't sound no. Dutch. He was uh, born in Philadelphia, son of a German immigrant, according to this little bio here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he must have imported them clearly from Holland. Yeah. Where else would they have come from? Here's a 1900. Okay, well, you got your hyacinths, you got your narcissus, your yeah, tulips. Yeah, tulips, yeah, from 1900. I mean, the, the little planting diagrams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, which looks very Holland esque, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where they just plant in these, like, <laughs> That's right, rows. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Collections of tulips, yeah, again, also more planting diagrams. That's yeah. great. Crocus, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is, so this is Dreer's, this is his, this is the special price list in December. Of course, it does have, you know, the usual um, bedding plants and such. But um, for the holidays, he did have some house plants. But here's some Kentia palms. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we often see. Yep, and some ferns. Mm -hmm. So this was this is 1899 or 98. So even wow, even mushroom spawn. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Fresh importation of English mill track mushroom spawn now in stock and in fine condition. The quality is the same as sent out by in the past years. That's cool. 15 cents per brick. Well, that is just, I mean, with our inflation. <laughs> Hard to believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that was 1899, I'm sorry. Ferns, palms, and begonias definitely seem to dominate the catalogs. And it says Holiday decorative list. plants for Christmas sales. For Christmas yeah. sales, yes, yeah. yes. So, you know, when you couldn't be planting outside, mm -hmm. you could be planting Here's fine planting ferns, inside. a general collection, um, and the araucaria, the Norfolk Island pine that oh, yeah. we, we still, we still <laughs> grow have at this. Christmas, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it's like when whenever some of my friends see that who are not plant people, they're like, I love that because it looks like a pine tree. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not mm -hmm. a pine. It's not in the pine family. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, asparagus sprengeri, which mm -hmm. is the, one of the asparagus ferns. That's still very common. Now, I've never seen an azalea grown indoors. No, no, neither have I. Yeah. Begonia, so here are begonias. Oh, and our... Uh, well, that looks like a, well, that's pandanus. Pandanus, so that's, no, that's it's not. A, I thought it was a spider plant. Yeah, but first, that looks but like not. a spider plant, but it's the one mm -hmm. that's uh, commonly used, I think, in the Philippines and everything for cooking. And I was surprised to see pandanus offered quite liberally, which at first glance looked like a chlorophytum or a spider plant or a dracaena, which is fun because it was one of the plants I had previously featured as a nice substitute for the run of the mill dracaena. Peperomia. Yes, Peperomia metallica, which we know and maculosa, and then it's ficus elastica, which is obviously a very common one, mm -hmm. and some new begonias, which are probably not so new anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the, this is a Breck catalog. They were all bound, so um, you have to kind of uh, page through them, fall 1886, but again, the, um, you know, this very early use of color. And they're still around, Brecks. And Breck, yes, yeah. Breck is the one that is still, that you could still order your peas from today. Look, beautiful. Oh, wow. Delphinium Breckii. Um, and this is, this is kind of interesting because Joseph Breck, the senior senior, started this company. He was in, from Massachusetts and he started this company in, oh, in the 1830s or 50s, 1830s maybe, and was an editor of the New England Farmer in the 1820s and 30s. His great-great-grandson, Joseph Breck, designed the garden at the Cloisters when wow. the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art acquired it. Wow. In, well, I don't, I'm not sure, what, 1920s, maybe? Um, so he, although he apparently died before he could, real, could see it realized, yeah. um, so a descendant of this man um, was still um, active in the horticultural business, the nursery business, the landscape design business um, three generations later and continue even today. So that's a really long, 
long, long history. I, I think mean, it's impressive, no matter what company, to hear mm -hmm. a company uh, going forward for over hundreds of years, or a hundred years at least, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to, for the fact that it's um, kind of the same-ish, you know, mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. and especially one in horticulture, you know? Yeah, well, 200 years, right? 200 years, that's right. We're in 2020 now. Yeah, that's so. true. Yeah, long history. The, so these, this is an interesting, um, there's a, a website called saveseeds.org mm -hmm. and the Seedsman Hall of Fame, that's where I um, <laughs> printed some of this information out because I don't have this uh, off the top of my head, but yeah. um, if you're interested in some of these things. So these catalogs are from Peter Henderson in New York City. His are also very, at least the, co the covers are very colorful mm -hmm. as, you know, the back pages, I rainbow like they, collection they, of bulbs. They've basically put everything like bulbs and pots, and then they have the big, mm -hmm. you know, fancy palms behind. It really feels like the jungle here. And some lilies here. Yeah, yeah just some other, some maybe peperomia, maybe some begonia <laughs> even. Look. <laughs> yeah. It could be. So it must be they had those offerings as well. Lawn grass seed, blackberries. It's re it's interesting too how how broad their offerings were. Yeah. Um, when you look at these catalogs, you think of now, you think of, you know, Stark Brothers today is mostly um, fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables, yeah. right. Um, and then there are some that are um, exclusively, you know, bedding plants and um, annuals and perennials. Yeah, but, I mean, all but, of these things have such different growing conditions, you know. Right, right. And, and, a, and a whole different suite of, of knowledge um, and how to, how to, not, not just to how to use these things, but how to um, grow these things and yeah. nurture these I mean, things think like and forcing make them bulbs available and stuff like for that. sale. Yeah. You know, it's definitely, um, definitely a very involved process. Here's the festival collection of pot-grown strawberries. Hmm. That's exciting, huh? This is Edgar Queen strawberry. Look at all the different strawberries. Huh? Yeah. Miss, Mrs. Cleveland. <laughs> I mean, first of all, they all look the same. They just have a different. <laughs> they just have a that different name. That was my name. thought. I was surprised to see that <laughs> that they all had different names. This is 1896, Peter Henderson. So, and this one's also really, really lovely. Uh, got really lovely um, covers. The Childs, um, John Lewis Childs, 1897. 98, 99, 99, maybe? And in Floral Park, New York, which is in... In uh, Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think, right? It, or I thought it was in Long Island. Oh, let's see. Dale, is that where Long, no, I, Nassau? Um, yeah, Nassau, he, Nassau County. Park. He purchased Long land Island. locally and named the area Floral Park, which still exists today mm -hmm. as an incorporated village in Nassau County. Yep, yeah, that's, uh, I was going to say, a lot of Long Island, a lot of our plants are still grown in Long Island. Mm, so there's mm -hmm. a unique history there as well. Yep, so these are... And the Planting Fields Arboretum is out there, mm. although I don't know if Nassau County, but that's one of the really beautiful arboretums that we have. Some green pages. Yes. Gloxinias. And oh, here's some nice ferns. Oh, here's yeah. here are these house Boston plants. Ferns. Boston fern, staghorn fern. A pygmy Boston fern. Cool. <laughs> Even has some pictures of the roots. And good old geraniums or pelargoniums. Yeah. As they can be called. <laughs> Boxinia, so these are also house plants. Oh, look at the alocasia yeah. and crotons and mm -hmm. streptocarpus, which is known as our, uh, it's a violet, right? African no, violets. African violets, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm.
Something I didn't recognize was a plant called Tolinium variegatum, a robust plant with thick succulent leaves, which are beautifully variegated white and green, a highly ornamental plant, and one that does well in shady or northern exposed windows, or at least that's what the catalog has said. I had to look that one up, and it looks like Tolinum paniculatum variegatum, which is called fame flower, or Jewels of Opar, and is indeed offered still on the market, but has likely fallen out of favor as a house plant. And then it gets oh, into passifloras. passifloras. This starts getting into like, I sometimes might need a greenhouse for these. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, the Japanese fern balls. Oh. What is that? These are large round basket like bunches of fern roots. Oh, so maybe these are the Things ones are that are. Um, are they the similar to like Kokodama? Right, right, yeah. right. That's what I was thinking. And here's a climbing <laughs> fern. It doesn't have any scientific name associated with it, though. Or a photo or an illustration. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And a trailing, trailing crassula. Huh? So that's. that's pretty, huh? Yeah, that's probably. Oh, that's the um, string of buttons, I think it's often called. Because hmm. again, no. Uh, scientific name here. And look, he's got, well, he's, it's copyrighted, this, apparently this, this oh, uh, interesting. variety is theirs. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is like a, similar to like, I think a Tradescantia, I right. believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, same family. Yeah. yeah. Roses. Zinnias. I mean, where do they get these typefaces from? <laughs> the crazy. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't have, couldn't have been inexpensive to to produce this yeah. and, um, and just to send them out, you know, yeah. <laughs> quite a. So yeah, Boston fern was definitely like a uh, popular thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, all these begonias, oh, I love yeah. begonias. Yeah, me too. I like the succulent begonias, but I haven't seen hmm. succulent begonias um, sold in these catalogs yet. There's such a, a variety of leaf patterns yeah. and giant flowering caladium. There's a giant flowering caladium. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't always see your caladiums in flower unless maybe you're in Florida. There's the backs of those. Works of art. For sure. Amazing, well thank you so much for taking us on this little journey. Oh, I welcome. really, I really appreciate Great. it. Thanks to all the viewers and supporters of our channel and the students of our online houseplant courses like the Houseplant Masterclass. All of that really helps us produce the great content that you see here. And 1% of our Google AdSense revenue from this channel goes straight back to plant conservation initiatives. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications button if you'd like to be one of our supporters. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next episode.